Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on LiDAR with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with the College of Natural Resources and Environment at Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and GeoTED UAS. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. The prior chapter demonstrated how to create and navigate a 2D map project and a 3D map scene with LiDAR data. In this chapter, we explore LiDAR dataset properties, details about the dataset, such as the metadata, point count, coordinate system information, and much more. Open a new ArcGIS Pro local map scene and add the four LiDAR tiles from North Dakota shown here. Right-click on the 125156 tile and choose View Metadata. Here you see the catalog view has opened and metadata is active, but a message displays that this metadata is FGDC metadata. Upgrading is not necessary to simply view the metadata, so click on View Content. This window shows the same metadata in XML format that we explored in a previous chapter. Go ahead and review it, and then close the browser window. Let's look at geography. Nothing is here. LiDAR point clouds cannot be viewed in catalog. However, some geoprocessed products of LiDAR data, such as raster files, can be viewed here. The same thing is true when you select table. LiDAR point clouds don't have attribute tables, but of course all vector and even some raster files do. Let's return to the map scene. If the metadata needs editing, you can right-click on the layer's name and choose Edit Metadata. In this case, we get a warning message. While this chapter does not demonstrate editing or adding metadata, completing metadata is extremely important when geoprocessing results in the creation of a new data product. Close the warning window. Now let's go to the properties for this layer. General provides the layer name and information about the visibility of the point cloud. We'll talk about these settings in more details in Chapter 15 on LiDAR display settings. In metadata, information is limited because it was not completed by the producer of the dataset. Source is also populated from the file's metadata. Location is where the file is stored on the computer. Last points is the total number of points in the point cloud for the selected tile. Vertical units the height of each point above mean sea level is in meters, and statistics will be introduced and discussed in more detail in subsequent chapters. Extend provides the coordinates for the top, or the northernmost location of the point cloud, the bottom, the southernmost, left, western, and right, eastern. Coordinate units are meters. Now expand spatial reference. Here we get the most detailed information, including, for example, the projected coordinate system, the linear, angular, and vertical units. All this information is extremely important to know when completing geoprocessing operations on this dataset or in conjunction with other datasets. Let's go to elevation. The information displayed here is also gleaned from the metadata. Under at an absolute height, the height is the elevation from mean sea level. For elevation units, the height data is in meters because the source is in meters, but the display units can be changed on the fly by choosing a different unit here. Now choose Cache. Caching helps improve the performance of ArcGIS Pro with large datasets. The default setting usually works quite well. However, see this link for more information about changing the cache settings. Now for the last menu item, Last Filter. This area provides information about what type of classifications have already been applied to a point cloud, and which of those points have been chosen to be displayed in the scene. Checked boxes indicate points that are being displayed in the map viewer. For this dataset, all points are being displayed. For these North Dakota LiDAR tiles, a considerable amount of classification has already been accomplished. The first column lists many different classification codes, unassigned, ground, low vegetation, for example. The second column is return values. This shows the number of returns per LiDAR pulse. In addition to a numbered return, a return can also be last, first of many, last of many, and single. So a point can be a first return and a return number one, or it could be a single return and a return number one. The final column 
classification flags, are unique information to a dataset and explained in the comprehensive metadata for the tile. The importance of changing the points displayed will be covered in Chapter 16 on LiDAR Symbology. Close the Properties dialog box for this tile and open it for the properties for the 125154 tile. Comparing the source for this tile to this screenshot of the 125156 tile source, notice the number of last points is fewer. Compare their extents. The left and right values are the same, but the top and bottom values are different. These tiles are adjacent, so if they share a north or south border, their east and west extents will be the same. At this point, we're finished reviewing last dataset properties. The next few chapters review the new toolbars and associated tabs that display when last tiles are added to ArcGIS Pro.